Today, the Eastern Horn of Africa records the highest number of journalists arrested in the world. Recently, five journalists were accused of terrorism in Ethiopia and are still waiting to be sentenced. We had seven journalists jailed uh, uh, last year. Uh, one was released, thankfully, but it was still at seven. And five of these are on terrorism charges. One group that seeks to fight for the rights of journalists is Committee to Protect Journalists. This group, which recently celebrated its 30-year anniversary, also launched the 2011 report on journalism persecution and arrests. The Committee to Protect Journalists uh, recently had its 30th anniversary last year, 2011. Uh, it's, it was started by journalists, basically to help journalists. And what we try and do is we advocate for our colleagues in the field whenever they're in trouble, uh, usually with a massive media campaign. Uh, we try and talk to political leaders and institutions to encourage journalists to be released from prison, etc. Since 1992, more than 800 journalists have been killed with over 560 being killed with impunity. And since January this year, East Africa has had six journalists killed. One of the mandates of Committee to Protect Journalists is to liaise with associates to make sustainable policies that will address the problem. We're actually doing quite a lot of co-partnership with other NGOs and other organizations uh, to make sure that journalists do get training. I mean, one, one project I'm working on now is trying to see ways to let uh, our colleagues in Somalia get better security training uh, so they know how to handle themselves in, in the war zones. Their persistent efforts to protect one of East Africa's fallen journalists, Francis Nyarori, is yet to bear fruit. Francis was investigating a corruption case in Kenya's western province in 2009. The case had involved the police and other bigwigs in a construction scandal. Francis Nyerere was a, a reporter with the Weekly Citizen and he was brutally murdered in, in uh, 2009. And up to this day, his case has not been resolved. And, uh, you know, we, we feel at CPJ that the local reporter really needs our help the most because he doesn't have the same institutional backing that, say, a, a wire reporter or, or a, you know, a nation reporter, for example, might have. Um, so we're determined to make sure that justice is done and we've collected quite a lot of evidence uh, in the case and, and feel that there's a lot of avenues that haven't been explored that need to be explored uh, to ensure that, uh, that impunity doesn't reign in, in Kenya for, the, for murder, journalist, journalists' murder. Still, there are countries which have put policies in place geared towards protecting freedom of the press. Well, for one, we've got Kenya. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the constitution and the articles, clauses uh, devoted to press freedom are some of the most robust in the world. I think what we really need to look into now is to make sure that people actually adhere to the constitution, uh, and, and, and particularly for these clauses, in, in, in my view. Um, we've seen some positive signs in Uganda, I mean, in terms of getting rid of sedition laws and uh, other laws which they are questioning the constitutionality of them. Uh, but again, we've also seen a crackdown in Uganda in, to, uh, in terms of reporting on opposition figures and, and uh, protests and, and riots against uh, fuel prices, for example. But the road to media freedom is not without hiccups. The thing about press freedom in Africa is it's, it's, a, it's kind of a, a tumultuous reading because while one country may do very well one year, the next minute the record may completely drop and it, it could be a surprise to all of us. I mean, let's look at South Africa. South Africa and, and Kenya are, are some of the most robust and active medias we have in, in sub-Saharan Africa. And yet last year in 2011, the ANC wanted to pass what's commonly called by the public as the secrecy bill, which would basically outlaw investigative journalism. It would be a huge blow to, to South Africa. And, and I feel for the rest of Africa, because people look up to South Africa, just like they do to Kenya, uh, as a, a leader in, in uh, professional media. With Somalia being the most unsafe area for journalists, it is expected that the establishment of press freedom will lead to a great number of journalists. Online journalists are being arrested and targeted. Uh, we never saw this before in 2008 and 2009, but Africa is picking up in terms of social media and in terms of the internet in general. 
As the Committee to Protect Journalists releases its 2011 report, the common man will continue to be informed, educated and entertained without boundaries.